Hi guys, welcome to energy transfer and productivity. So in this video, we will be looking at the content. And if you would like to look at the practice and the past paper questions, you need to go to the um, playlist on the map skills year two and have a look at the section five video. So uh, here we will be looking today at the gross primary production and the net primary production. And we will also introduce equations to work out the productivity. What you really need to remember is the fact that energy cannot be created or cannot be destroyed. Okay, so don't be don't be using that words, the words that you need to produce, uh, not produce, but um, include is released. Okay, so energy is released. That's the wording that examiner would like to see from you. So let's get started. We've got here the past paper questions. You can now stop the video and you can read through the question properly. Right? Ready? So you need to use only the information provided. So that's important thing. We've got only. Okay. And we're looking at the uh, giant biomass here and the large number of trees. That's important as well. So Calculate the mean diameter. Where does that coming from? Because we've got the large number of trees. Estimate the mean fresh biomass. Okay, because we uh, we were looking here at obviously the dry biomass, but um, fresh biomass it's something that we're starting with. Use the percentage water content to find the dry biomass because what we've learned in our video uh, before was the fact that the dry biomass is the one that contains the fresh uh, biomass and obviously here we've got water okay uh, so uh, dry biomass is that fresh mm, without the water okay and use the dry density to calculate the mass of tree and then count estimate the number of trees that were uh, used here and obviously look at the carbon content to find the total um, total uh, amount of the carbon in here okay so what we need to remember when we're looking at the ecosystem is the fact that the energy will flow through the ecosystem and the cycling of elements through the ecosystem will take place as well. So like here, for example, nitrogen cycle. So uh, in terms of the productivity and traffic efficiency, what we need to remember is the fact that the net primary productivity of an ecosystem determines the amount of biomass available to primary consumers and will be different in the ecosystems. So trophic ecological efficiency refers to efficiency of energy transfer from one trophic level to another trophic levels. There are limiting factors uh, that could uh, take place here, for example, temperature, light and water. How does that affect the biomass, the productivity of this biomass? For example, water. In terms of the light dependent reaction, the process of photolysis, so splitting water into hydrogens, electrons and oxygen is taking place. The hydrogens and electrons are really important because they are here to reduce NAT P. Okay, so if obviously a uh, product of the light dependent reaction, it's not P one of the things that you need for the Calvin cycle to produce your biomass to produce glucose. And how much of the produce of biomass is consumed and uh, assimilated? That's uh, what's incorporated into new biomass. So only actually about 5 to 20 percent of energy is transferred from one trophic level to another because they are using energy for respiration and other processes. And flow of energy through the ecosystem can be measured. And this is what we will be looking at today. So to re recap quickly on the biomass, it's the total dry mass of organic matter because remember, we're not interested in water. Water doesn't give us any energy. And the net primary production, it's the amount of new biomass added in a given period of time. Because what is the net primary production is the gross uh, 
primary production minus respiratory loss. So we will be looking at this. Okay, so uh, remember, this is what our uh, biomass is uh, explained. It's explained by the products of photosynthesis. That's what the producers will produce for the next tropic levels. But the main loss of the energy will be because of the respiration, which also the producers need to undergo. So the equation that I've mentioned before, it's the NAMP primary production, which equals gross minus respiratory loss. So what we need to remember about NET is the chemical energy stored, which is left when these losses to respiration have been taken into account and the rate at which plants store energy, so that glucose. So the gross then is the total quantity of the chemical energy stored in plants biomass in a given area or volume in a given time. And the total quantity of energy that the plants in the community, so all of the population, can convert into the organic matter. So what we've mentioned, the respiratory losses are the biggest ones. So around 20 to 50 percent of this um, gross primary uh, production is energy that we will lose in respiration. So factors that can control the net primary production, uh, there are plenty. So light intensity obviously affects the light dependent reactions. Products of the light dependent reaction will affect light independent reactions. So it would be less uh, reduction of GP to TP. Okay, so less glucose. So obviously less biomass. Nutrients, okay, again, so here you could talk about the uh, nitrogen cycle, temperature, obviously, uh, lower temperature, less kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, again, you could refer to the light independent reaction when you've got the enzyme Rubisco. So if there is less temper uh, temperature is lower, will be less kinetic energy. So the activity of Rubisco will be lower. So again, the same explanation. So less GP will be reduced to TP and less glucose will be produced and less RUBP will be then uh, reformed. Right. Uh, and then we've got the density of plant population and limiting nutrients again. So all of those factors obviously will affect the uh, will affect the net primary production. So uh, net primary production of the consumers then uh, will be represented by another equation, which is the chemical energy store of ingested food taking away the energy loss in feces and respiration. Okay, so that's another equation that you need to be aware of. And in my math skills video for uh, section five, you've got more questions uh, and more problem solving situations based on that equation. So energy efficiency, that's another uh, equation. So that will be energy used for the growth divided by energy supply. Right, and the energy efficiency, we could also use the percentage efficiency, which normally the examiners probably would like from you. So it's the energy available after transfer divided by before transfer times 100%. And again, examples on that are in my maths video on section 5. So uh, in terms of the productivity and the farming, you might get uh, questions like suggest why or whatever. So here I would recommend to uh, refer to the terminology like monoculture, conservation, increasing yields by increasing the efficiency of energy transfer along the food chains which produce our food. And finally, the farming practices uh, reduce energy loss and increase the yield. So they could do it by the increased rearing of domestic livestock, restrict movement, environment kept warm, controlled feeding. But if we are think, looking at the reduced losses to non-human food chains, we could, this could be done by simplifying food webs. 
So the wool reduces organisms from a food web 